Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toys Capades channel. Thanks for joining me. So I cover a lot of Jurassic World and Jurassic Park news on the channel and recently fandom went into a meltdown of unbridled excitement when a new Jurassic Park project titled Battle at Big Rock was recently announced. Actually, the announcement was made via a declaration that was printed out on the toy boxes for two new dinos, the Nasutoceratops and the Allosaurus, where it just said, as seen in Battle at Big Rock. Now, how will the media be presented to us? As a live-action short film? An animated short movie? A video game? A web series? It could be any of those things, or all of them. Now, I just think that it's really awesome how the communication for this project was conveyed through the toys. Now, Mattel obviously has a really great campaign that they're building up to. But unlike the usual manner in which things like these are publicized, such as an early announcement at Toy Fair or via a trailer online, near as I can tell, other than some random whispers online, the first official announcement, hints and clues of this project was through the availability of the toys on retail shelves. Guys, I've been collecting action figures since the early 90s. In those days, information was scarce. It was a pre-internet era and you really had to rely on hobby and collector magazines to get the latest scoop on what new toys were coming out and what was being produced. Or the other way to do it was to head down to your nearest toy department to get the live, on-the-ground update on what was being made available. In 1996, I was pretty heavy into collecting Kenner's new Star Wars Power of the Force line. So I would be stalking the toy shelves at the shopping marts pretty religiously. Now on one of those encounters, I remember heading to the Star Wars section and being blown away by a new concept series of figures known as Shadows of the Empire. To the best of my knowledge, this was the first time Kenner had introduced an expanded universe line of Star Wars toys that used concepts, ideas and characters from the universe in toy form but wasn't based on any existing live-action incarnation. Now to support the backstory, there was an officially licensed comic book from Dark Horse, a novelization, even a video game. But make no mistake, the real goods here were the toys. And that's fantastic. Of course, one could argue that Star Wars, especially in the late 90s, did not need an expanded universe to sell millions of toys. But it's awesome that they tried and it remains one of the earliest, if not the earliest, example of this in toy form. Getting back to Mattel's Jurassic World and their Battle at Big Rock project, whatever it might be, it's great that they've started things off by using the toys to sell more toys. Unlike most other situations where you see pop culture merchandise being built off existing movie, cartoon and comic book properties, this approach is definitely a better one to take in sustaining longevity on the toy shelves. If you look back at the last few Jurassic Park movies, general interest in the toys only lasted a few months to a year after the movies came out. Department store shelves also stopped stocking up product as there were no new items being announced. So far, as we can see from Mattel's approach, the presence of Jurassic World toys has maintained its hold on toy shelves for a full year since last year's Fallen Kingdom movie release, and they do not show any signs of slowing down. So guys, let me know what you think of Battle at Big Rock. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, kindly do subscribe to the channel for more pop culture news and commentary that you didn't ask for. I'll catch you guys again soon.